All right, this video I'm going to do uh, some examples of return on investment and rate of return. The return on investment is just the profit amount or loss divided by the original investment and the rate of return is calculated by finding a future amount divided by a starting amount raised to a power 1 over the amount of time minus 1. Okay, the first example I'll look at, number 1, an investment increases from 100 to 130. What's the return on investment? Well, you could see right away the answer should be 30%. That's a $30 increase from $100, and that's a 30% increase. Um, we can do the calculation as follows. Return on investment is the profit, 30, divided by the original investment. That's 0.3, and written as a percentage, that's 30%. Number two, an investment decreases from 500 to 400, so you can see that here we have a loss, a $100 loss, calculate like this, $100 loss with an original investment of 500, this is negative 0.2, so I would say the answer is a negative 20% return on investment. You also might look at this in order to get that negative as a new amount minus an old amount divided by an old amount. That way if you put the new amount first minus the old amount, if the new amount's smaller, you'll have a negative and you'll get the negative right on the answer. Number three says over three years an investment of 2500 increases to 3127. What's the return on investment here? One of the purposes of this example is to illustrate that three years doesn't matter here. As I'm doing return on investment here, I'm not considering the actual time period. That actually comes up in the rate of return. So the answer is done just exactly as we did before. The profit, which I could say is the new amount, 3127 minus 2500, that's the difference, divided by the original amount, $627 profit divided by 2500 and that comes out 0 0.2508 so we could round that off in different ways it's about 25 percent let's say 25.08 percent if you wrote it exactly as you know converting that to a percentage but we might just round it off to say 25 percent or 25.1 percent uh, any of those are correct depending on the context depending on the how accurate you want to be one other comment is just a describe how the return on investment is um, a specific example of a, of a concept that's called a percent change. Um, so return on investment is the percent change. And the percent change is just, is just this uh, how much the quantity changes divided by what it was originally. That is to say the change in the quantity as a fraction of the original amount written as a percentage describes what we call the return on investment. Okay, just uh, to sort of uh, summarize that point about how percent change is a general uh, concept at, and the return on investment is just a specific example of percent change. You can uh, understand percent change to represent the change divided by whatever the starting amount was or your starting point. And return on investment is the same thing. It, the change is your profit or loss. The starting point is that original investment. You could think of it as a new amount minus an old amount divided an old amount, or you might see it as a future amount written as uh, an amount at time n minus an amount at time zero divided by the amount at time zero. Now, once you have this fraction, you can write that fraction as a decimal and then convert that decimal to a percentage. All right, so the next thing I want to do is move on to talk about rate of return. Okay, to talk about the rate of return, I actually want to begin with the compound interest formula and develop the formula for a rate of return here. Um, if you Google compound interest formula um, and look in most textbooks, the way you'd see it is this first formula up here at the top. In this first formula, A represents a future amount. P is a principal amount, that is an initial amount. R is an annual interest rate. Uh, nominal refers to the fact that this is not including the compounding itself. It's the actual interest rate annually, um, where it's written as a decimal, not a percentage. Uh, N is the number of times compounded per year, and T is the number of years 
that the investment is held. Uh, that's how that's what those uh, variables represent. In our book, it's just slightly different the way it's written. We'll use p sub n to represent the balance in the future after n years. We'll use p sub 0 to represent the starting balance, the balance at time 0. R again represents the annual interest rate. K here represents the number of times the investment is compounded per year. And n is the number of years. So these are almost exactly the same. Um, I mean, they are definitely the same formula, just different variables to represent the, the quantities in the formula. OK, to come up with the formula for the rate of return, I'll begin with this compound interest formula the way it's written in our book. Now I'm going to write p sub n is p sub 0 times 1 plus r over k to a power n times k. But let's, let's set k equal to 1 here. And I'm no longer going to assume that r necessarily represents an annual interest rate. It's just an interest rate per unit of time. And so the compounding, I'm going to just say, is once per unit of time. That unit of time could be days, or weeks, or months, or years, or any uh, unit of time. So if I rewrite this formula with k equal to 1, it looks like this. So I'm going to use the formula in this way. OK, so now we have the compound interest formula written uh, with k equal to 1. And what I want to do now is solve for n. OK, now solving this formula for r, what I'll do first is divide both sides by p sub 0. Then it'll cancel as a factor here. And I'll have p sub n divided by p sub 0 is 1 plus r to the nth power. Now, the next thing I'll do is take an nth root of both sides. The nth root can also be written as a power 1 over n. So if we wrote p sub n over p sub 0, and we raise to a power 1 over n on both sides, the purpose of that is to get rid of the power n here. So we have p sub n over p sub 0 to the power 1 over n equals 1 plus r. So I have p sub n over p sub 0 to a power 1 over n is 1 plus r. And of course, we'll subtract 1 from both sides. So I have p sub n or p sub 0 to the power 1 over n minus 1 equal r. Let's put it in this order. r equals p sub n, the future amount, divided by the starting amount power 1 over n minus 1. OK, so we've reached this point r equals p sub n over p sub 0 all to the power 1 over n minus 1. And we'll write it, actually, the way that we use it in class. We'll say r is a sub n or a sub 0 to the power 1 over n minus 1, where a sub n is just a future amount a sub 0 is a starting amount. n represents the number of units of time. Uh, and, and that's how we'll use the formula. So the way that we'll use it in class is the rate of return is r equal to the quantity a sub n over a sub 0, all to the power 1 over n minus 1. And r is the per unit time percentage rate of change. Um, that is the rate of return. So R is the rate of return. It could be an annual rate of return, a monthly or weekly or daily rate of return. It's a per unit time rate of return. Whatever unit time we're actually using, whatever unit of time N is counting. Um, so an A sub N is a final or future amount at some future time uh, after ten, uh, N increments of time. Um, a sub 0 is the initial amount or the principal or the original investment. It's the amount at time 0. n measures the length of time and how many increments of time it is. So if n was measuring uh, 10 months, we would be calculating the monthly rate of return. But if n was 10 years, n represented years, this would 
calculate the annual rate of return. And if n was counting days, this would be the daily rate of return. So it's whatever unit of time n represents, this formula calculates the rate of return per that unit of time. Uh, it's essentially calculating what, are the, what the return on investment is in each interval of time that produces um, a certain amount of growth or, or uh, decline. Okay, so for a first example, uh, let's go back to an investment of $100 that reaches 130 in three days. Let's find the daily rate of return. Well, it's three days, so we'll take n to be three, and using the formula, I have r equal to a future amount divided by a starting amount to a power one over the number of units of time, or increments of time, minus one, so in this case, future amount's 130, starting amount's 100. There are three days, so it's 1 over 3 minus 1, and this calculates the daily rate of return. So we've got 1.3 inside the parentheses to a power 1 third. So when you put this in the calculator, you have to make sure that that 1 third is the actual exponent. So lots of different calculators, you have to handle that differently, but just make sure that it's not raised to a power 1 and then the whole thing divided by 3. You've got to be really careful with the order of operations and how you enter it into your calculator. But if you enter that in correctly, what you'll end up with is approximately 0 0.091. I'm rounding off here. Uh, and so it's about 9.1%. That means each day the account would grow 9.1%. If it grew 9.1% each day for three days, the $100 would reach 130. You would get a total of 30% increase in three days by growing each day 9.1%. If you had a um, return on investment each day of 9.1, in three days you get a total of 30% uh, increase. It doesn't turn out to be exactly 10% every day because it's compounding. So 9.1% growth the first day, uh, it's larger, and then you only need 9.1% the next day, and then 9.1% on the third day to get a total 30% increase. That is three days of 9.1% increase uh, results in a 30% increase. And it, it so it's not three days of 10%, it's three days of 9.1% because, because of the compounding. Okay, the next example. An investment of 500 falls to 400 after five weeks. What's the weekly rate of return? So we'll start with our formula. The rate of return is the future amount, a sub n, divided by the starting amount, a sub 0, all to the power 1 over n minus 1. In this case, future amount is the 400. Starting amount, 500. The time period is five weeks. So if we use 1 over 5, that 5 is counting how many weeks. So we'll get the weekly rate of return this way. 400 divided by 500, that's 0.8, raised to a 1 -fifth power, minus 1. Put that in the calculator, and you get about negative 0.0436. That's about f negative 4.36, I'm rounding off, about negative 4.36%. Remember, we did this problem at the very beginning of the video, $500 falling to 400, and we found the return on investment was minus 20%. Let me do that again. Return on investment, a $100 loss with a starting amount of 500, we got negative 0.2, which is negative 20%. That was the return on investment. Now what this is telling me, this is my answer, this is the rate of return, and it's a weekly rate of return. And what it means here is that if the account was dropping 4.3%, 4.36% each week for five weeks, it would drop a total of 20% in five weeks. So this is sort of like the weekly return on investment of minus 4%, minus 4.36% produces a total negative 20% return on investment after five weeks. Okay, so let's look at this one as our last example. This is the same one we did for return on investment, 
but it included the three-year time period. So let's go back and look at that one again. Over three years, an investment of $2,500 increases to 3127 And before we asked what was the return on investment, we did this calculation before, and we found that it was a 25.08% total return on investment. Now let's calculate the annual rate of return. That is, how much is it increasing each year that produces this total 25% return on investment? What are the yearly return on investments? If I type this into the calculator, I get approximately 0.077. Again, rounding off, this is about 7.7%. So that's the answer. We're looking at an investment that's increasing about 7.7% each year. And think about it, if it increases 7.7% compounding annually over three years, it'll increase about 25% total. Okay, that's the end of the video. I hope this was helpful.